That's right, Chamberlain and Mark, where it doesn't matter what uh, uh, politics, conversation and uh, structure or no structure, we must not be distracted. We must do business. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. And yes, we're doing business in just about 30 minutes. We're starting from the global space as usual, telling you that oil price is gained today with global benchmark Brent set for its first weekly increase in three weeks on signs of improving global demand amid stronger economic and indicators from key consumers, China and the United States. Uh, you can see right there that prices are in the green, 0.47% for Brent at $83.66 a barrel for the United States crude, which is uh, U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude. That is also up 22 cents. That's about 0.28% at $79.45 a barrel. Looking at the drivers now, uh, the features are set to rise about 1%. Market uh, further bolstered by China's industrial output. It grew at 6.7% year on year in April as recovery in its manufacturing sector gathered pace, pointing to possibly stronger demand uh, to come. Uh, declines in oil and refined product inventories at major global trading hubs have also created optimism over oil demand growth, reversing a trend of rising stockpiles that had weighed heavily on crude oil prices. OPEC Plus is also a contributor this morning. We see that there are cuts uh, in oil outputs beyond June. It's likely to see firmer prices in the medium term. Let's look at our currency at this time. Mixed bag at the close of trade on Thursday. Nafex is threatened, gained 14 era 88 cover. Uh, that's about 2.65 to close at 1,501 naira to cover uh, throughout the trading session. While NAFEM was on the flip side at the close of trade, 1,533 naira, 99 cover. We know that the bulk of activities are captured on NAFEM platform. So most of the time we see more demand in NAFEM. Uh, than NAFEX, and then we record that uh, drop in the value of Naira. But I mean, in most cases, NAFEM uh, captures the reality of the value of the Naira. So now we can say the Naira is still around 1,533 Naira, 99 cover after it dropped by 5.14% at the close of trade on Thursday. You must have heard uh, the fear that uh, there's uh, going to be perhaps an illegal use of your pension fund. You know that money you're depending on as retirement. Well, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Waledu, has clarified those talks. Uh, he says that the federal government's plan uh, does not include any legal access of 20 trillion naira pension and life insurance funds. He says this himself. To my notice that there are stories making arounds that the federal government plans to illegally access the hard-earned savings and pension contributions of workers. Nothing could be further from the truth. The pension industry, like most of the financial industry, is highly regulated. There are rules, there are limitations about what pension money can be invested in and what it cannot be invested in. The federal government has no intention whatsoever to go beyond those limits and go outside those bounds, which are there to safeguard uh, the pensions of workers. Now, what was announced to the Federal Executive Council, merely for noting, merely for information, um, no approval was sought for any action whatsoever, was that there was an ongoing initiative drawing in all the major stakeholders in the long-term savings industry, those that handle funds that are available over a long period, to see how within the rules, within the regulations and the laws, these funds could be used maximally, most effectively, to drive investment in key growth areas, infrastructure, housing, and of course, to find a way to provide Nigerians with affordable mortgages. 
So, um, well, perhaps that uh, clarification by the minister will calm nerves, but we'll see in the coming days. Uh, now, let's, uh, it's a season of uh, first quarter earnings and, and not just in Nigeria, globally also. And the banks are in the fore of all of that because of that recapitalization conversation which is going on. One of Nigeria's premier provider of retail, commercial and corporate banking products, Stanbic IBTC Holdings held its 12th annual general meeting, uh, looking at the financial year, full year 2023. Let's get the details in this report. It's the 12th annual general meeting of Stambic IBTC Holdings PLC. And once again, all interested parties have come to look at the year 2023 financial performance. Present are uh, the chairman of the group, Mr. Basil Mi, Chief Executive Demola Shogule, and Shala Bora, non-executive director of Stambik IBTC Holdings PLC, as well as the company's loyal shareholders. Which also was ranked in this category. The chairman of the group presents his address emphasizing the importance of annual general meeting. Your board will continue to support management in navigating the challenges of the operating environment mindful of our service promise to customers and the need to deliver sustainable long-term value to our esteemed shareholders. Management and shareholders are unanimous in the assessment of the 2023 financial year, describing it as a successful one with the revenue for the year on the review standing at $339.71 billion. Profit before tax stands at 172.91 billion naira, while profit after tax is put at 140.62 billion naira. Dividend per share is 2 naira 20 kobo. The success of Stambic IBTC Holdings PLC over the years can be attributed to a number of factors such as diversity and alignment with global best practices. Our aim is to ensure that there is a very strong representation um, of gender um, and ensuring that at the same time we are uh, bringing forward our very best. Stambic IBTC Holdings PLC is the only triple A rated financial institution in Nigeria by Fitch Ratings. I, I think it's something that is of delight, you know, um, to the country that a company like Stambic IBTC is properly aligned to some of these global best practices. Stambic IBTC Holdings PLC, which prides itself as Nigeria's leading end-to-end -end financial service provider and management says is to continue to infuse effective corporate governance and oversight Amazing. to keep the company on track. Well, we also ensure the board is evaluated by both as individual directors and also as a board and even the committees are evaluated it's only what you measure that's what you can improve um, that's really the basis to get a good corporate governance standard uh, you, you make sure they have the education and you measure uh, your progress as one of Nigeria's economic enabler, Stambic IBTC Holding PLC assures its shareholders that it remains focused on delivering quality service to numerous publics. That's it, uh, Stanbic, and we know that uh, it is also one of those uh, banks of interest at this uh, recapitalization. Now, uh, let's look ahead. On Monday, the MPC begins it meeting that the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria, they begin their meeting for decision to be announced on Tuesday. We've said inflation number, it's a major factor for consideration for the meeting. Uh, we saw that even though inflation is still on the rise, the rate of increase is declining. Um, let's see if that will change the minds of the committee uh, by Monday and Tuesday. But before we get into that, Let's find out what Dr. Josh Bamford, Dr. Josh Bamford is a partner and head transfer pricing and economics at Anderson. Uh, Dr. Bamford, it's good to have you this morning. Uh, I know the other time we had you during the MPC conversation. Now we are pushing you to go into the minds of the uh, uh, committee, members of the committee, and tell us perhaps what you can draw out as they begin their meeting and conversations on Monday, obviously, inflation number is top on the list of their consideration. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. 
clearly inflation is going to be the number one issue that they'll try to address come monday and tuesday um the governor of cbn has stated clearly that they are going back to the orthodox way of um you know managing or administering the central bank which means to focus on price stability so that is clearly going to be the number one agenda however there's also going to be discussions about the potential adverse impact of some of the monetary policies that have been implemented in order to bring price stability we've already seen you know some professional bodies actually reach out to the cbn to discuss the you know um, adverse impact of some of these policies on businesses um so yes inflation rate is still high if you look at um the rate as of april 33.69 um but the good news is as you rightly said the rate of increase is on a decline because march figure was 33.2 <clears throat> so that's less than one percentage point so that gives them some belief or hope that the monetary policies that they are implementing are actually starting to gain some traction whether that will be enough for them to halt you know the monetary policy rate hikes or continue to increase it because now they are confident that it's gaining traction, that is yet to be determined. But what is going to be high on their minds is the adverse impact on the economy. Uh, we all know that 2023 ended up with a GDP growth rate of, you know, around 2.74. And the projections for quarter one of 2024 is between 2% to 2.5%. That is not encouraging. That is around the rate at which the population is growing, which means people are getting you know poorer by the day so we need a situation whereby cost of borrowing which is interest rates starts going down so that businesses can borrow start new basis businesses expand you know existing projects create more job opportunities so that we can start witnessing you know higher economic growth rates so that's the dilemma that the cbn and the mpc is going to face on monday and tuesday you know do we continue to increase the monetary policy rate in order to bring price stability which is our core mandate or do we hold off a little bit because businesses are hurting with high cost of borrowing through high interest rates? So that's going to be the challenge. My view uh, most likely will be that there might be an increase in monetary policy rate, but, but by a much smaller um, margin, maybe 100 basis points or 50 basis points. But I think it might still be important for the Central Bank of Nigeria to signal to the investment community and the business community as large that price stability is their core mandate and until they get that under control until it tapers off and start decreasing we might have to make tough decisions such as continue to increase monetary policy rate mm. well, well I, I just want to um I, I want i want to look at this bigger picture during the last administration of uh, the cbn um they also kept hiking interest rate but it didn't seem like it was reflecting on inflation or prices I wonder what this administration is doing differently, or is it just that inflation has picked and it is now declining? Um, if you look at this current administration, you look at the June numbers, as of June, inflation rate was around 22.79 and when they took over. And since then, it's gone above 30%. You know, we are 33.69. So if you look at the administration's performance per se, that has not been that great. But the good news is that um, in recent times, there's been more aggressive, you know, um, monetary policy tightening. You remember when we had a conversation sometime in February, they actually raised the monetary policy rate by 400 basis points from 18.75 to 22.75. That was very aggressive. So I think what has been a bit different when you look at the current CBN governor compared to the previous one is there's more um, intentional um, approach to actually bring in price stability because to raise the um, MPR by 400 basis points was significant. Remember, they also raised the um, cash reserve um, ratio from 35% to about 2.5% um, to about 45%. That was also significant. So I think there's a more deliberate, you know, approach to actually bring in price stability from the current um, CBN go um, go governor. And that's the reason why maybe we are seeing these results. Another school of thought will, will be the fact that that the 3% is high enough. So at some point it has to taper off and start coming down. 
So we need to be getting some traction. But we also have to bear in mind, there are two major policies that this current government implemented that has not helped them in terms of the fight against inflation. One being the removal of the full subsidy and two being the flexibility of the exchange rate and re regime. So those two have been, you know, um, have worsened the inflation um, rate situation. And that's a reason why the CBN has to do more in order to curb the rate of um, rising inflation rate and actually start bringing it down. What would um, bring good news is where we start seeing the inflation rate decreasing, you know, then we know that they really are gaining traction with the tight monetary policy policies that they are implemented. All right, uh, Dr. Josh Bamford, this is just the beginning of the MPC conversation. We have a follow on Monday, partner and head transfer pricing and economic ad. Anderson, thank you so much for your views. Thanks for having me. You can be sure that on Monday, studios will open and we will keep having the MPC expectation conversations. And then on Tuesday uh, at 1 p.m., the studio will open and then we'll be waiting for the announcement of the decision, which we would uh, bring to you live, getting views and perhaps making the prediction before the uh, committee would make that announcement of its decision. All right, now, uh, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation has said that it has obtained winding up orders for 96 out of 183 microfinance and primary mortgage banks whose licenses were revoked by the Central Bank of Nigeria in May 2023. The managing director of NGIC, Mr. Belu Hassan, expressed the corporation's commitment to fulfill its mandate of protecting depositors through bank supervision, failure resolution and liquidation so as to boost confidence in the financial sector. Meanwhile, it seems the microfinance banks are also gearing up to become more impactful uh, in funding small businesses. Uh, they had their recapitalization in 2022, so they are not captured in the present one, but they are watching that space as uh, deposit banks take their turn. Well, I had a chat with the chairman of Baobab Microfinance Bank, Mr. Ruti Yekomi, on this, talking about recapitalization, how to be more impactful in the small business space. Well, we, we're not involved yet. Uh, we're expecting that we would also be called. Um, and what we have done as Baobab is we've looked at what the minimum requirement was. Uh, we've looked at what it was at that time in dollar terms and we look because we think that that's what the central bank has done they're trying to make sure that the banks are strong enough uh, for the business that they're carrying and so what we have done is we've done very similar thing we today have met we actually exceed the minimum requirement today but we know that this is coming and so what we've done is to try to understand what it would be whether we would need additional capital or we will not need additional capital if we need, we're ready for it. And so if they come to us today to provide a plan, we believe we can provide a plan tomorrow because we have preempted what will happen and we've been proactive, being ready for them. Well, from what you have described, it sounds like if we really want to boost production in the country, the first step or what we should do at this time, intervention should be in knowledge sharing and skills acquisition. And uh, I don't know, do you see the government doing something in that area? Let me, let me tell you my personal view. I, I think we actually overrate funding as a requirement for SMS. And the reason I think we overrate them is because there are, there are more important challenges that face essence than, you know, capital or even funding, right? One is knowledge of the industry where they're in. You know, people go into industries without even understanding the industry itself. I have involved in businesses where you look at their conversion rate and their conversion rate, to be frank, is so suboptimal that we can't compete. Right. So you then find, and that's why you find a few of these development agencies are seeing how you can support SMEs by giving them information. Because if you don't have information on the yield in the industry where you are in, or, or the technology that can make you efficient, so you can have the money, right? Even if interest rates are low, you might find that you are not producing in a way that you can be competitive. 
And so one of the things that we have tried to do is apart from providing the funding, right? Because you have to provide funding at market price. If what if if you say you want to give me a deposit, you won't take a suboptimal rate because I want to give money to people at suboptimal rate. And also I have to be competitive. I also have to have a sustainable business because if I give money at a rate lower than how much I'm getting it, I'm in trouble. So what we think is that there is issue around infrastructure, there's issue around knowledge. I am convinced that number one actually is knowledge. If you have information on the industry where you operate and you can operate efficiently, right, you'll be surprised how, does, and I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying interest rate is low. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, so that's what everybody has to cope with, right? However, where you have a difference is whether you can produce at an efficient level than others. I mean, you can take simple examples. Um, where do you plant potato, um, uh, what do you call it, tomato, right? How do you get tomato to the market, right? If you can't transport it, if you can't store it. So I'm saying the challenges are such that we need to look at the value chain and try to understand where the bottlenecks are. Because if we deal with the bottlenecks, you'd be surprised how a lot of what is produced doesn't even get to the market. And so when people say things are expensive in the market, why? It's because a lot of it is damaged or rotting, you know, closer to the gate of, the, of where it's being produced. Then you get into hard way transport. The roads are bad. Guess what? Our train moves people, not cargo. Everywhere in the world, train moves cargo, not people. I mean, I'm not saying they don't move people, but they move mostly cargo. So the question is, how do we get our infrastructure where we can say that our train, when I was growing up, it's train from Lagos to Kano. Moves people, moves cargo, which means that you can have granite in Kano. It gets to Lagos tomorrow. Today, how do you get it? By road. The roads are bad. And why are the roads bad? Because the, 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 the kind of haulage that goes on the road, the roads are supposed to be for cars. The kinds of haulage that goes on those roads. So I'm saying there are challenges. By the way, the challenges can be can be overcome. It's just we just need to focus, you know, and look at what's the area of priority. So if we do a value chain and try to understand how things go, then you can start saying, okay. What should we fix first? Is this storage? Is it real? Some of them are not things you switch. They're things that take some time. So we have to think, we have to think a lot about it. And then again, we can't do it for everything. So we have to also say the products that we think that we be competitive about, and those are the ones that we need to we need to work on. So in your dealing with these small businesses, what's sectors or types of businesses would you say will make good business or good investment at this time in the country? Uh, I'll probably surprise you when I say this. There's no industry that you don't have good businesses and good investments. None. You know, at one time I remember a long time ago, people were saying that, oh, commercial banks are better than merchant banks, right? Funny enough, at that time, when banks failed, equal number of commercial banks and merchant banks failed. So it's not about industry. It's about you. It's about this business. How is this business operating? Is it operating at a, at a level that it understands what's happening globally? Can it compete globally or can it not compete globally? Part of it is technology. Part of it is also the, the, the people themselves. You know, are we producing at a quality level? that makes us competitive. Are we, do we understand the yields? What are the average yields globally? Are we attaining those yields? And I can tell you, I can give you some examples. You go into a farm that does cassava, ask them the yield. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding, when you go around, most of the cassava farmers do not know the yield that they are operating. So you, if you don't know your yield, then how can you compete? So when you produce starch, how do you know that your starch is competitive? Because the yield, you don't even know your yield. So I'm saying you have those sort of things, and that's where you have to have, where you bring people together and say, let's train them, let them understand, for example, cassava manufacturers, let them under or cassava farmers, let them understand you know, what the yield can be 
and what it should be so that people start looking at how they improve and i'm not by the way i'm not saying it's easy but i've seen it i've seen where people produce and they don't even know the yield i've seen where people produce and they know the yield and the yield is way below what's happening internationally you can get into palm kernel you can get into palm oil you can get into starch i'm saying you can get into you just have to start producing and you realize that the challenge that we have i'm not saying interest it is not knowledge technique is a major part of what we need well that's it uh, uh looks like perhaps uh, according to uh, mr yekon there the chairman of baobab microfinance banks are we looking at the wrong direction or we're looking the wrong direction when it comes to boosting production from small businesses should it be more about knowledge sharing and skills acquisition and not just about the funds or the cost of the funds uh, i'll leave that to you to decide on your own but let's do a bit of the numbers now uh, to uh, before we head back to the Sunrise Daily Studios, we can tell you as a news item that the NGX, as the Nigeria Stock Exchange, it may sanction 47 companies over delayed audited reports. We saw the report there from Stanbic IBTC. There's been delay uh, to submit the, their, so that's some 47 companies, and they may be facing sanctions. Um, I, I'm sure in the coming days, We'll find out if that happens or not. Now, looking at the NGX, quite a surprise move yesterday. We did this uh, intraday together yesterday, and we're at 97. Even uh, our analysts had thought, well, we're going to end in the negative. But guess what? We did close up almost 1%, a huge move uh, that we saw, 0.84% right there. So we're back at 98,000, 98,000, 156.71. Equities cap yesterday, the market gained 467 billion Naira added. And so we are back comfortably on the 55 trillion Naira now, not at the tip anymore. 55.52 trillion Naira is what we close with. When we look at the activity chart, uh, even though deals were in red, I mean, we see the value, which is the most important, 8.93 billion naira moved around the market. Volume was at 409.77 million at the close of Thursday Street. Top trades, Nigerian breweries, UBA, Access Co. I get uh, uh, investor sentiments are also being touched by some of those uh, audited results and earnings that have been coming our way in uh, recent times. Uh, so there you have it, the top trades for yesterday. Uh, when we look at the other markets, uh, the fixed income and the unlisted market, the small unlisted markets, uh, that's the NESD. We see uh, it was in the negative, talking about the volume. The value was positive, however, 52.14% deals dropped about 10% and only four uh, stocks traded just like the previous day, uh, and then the all share was in the negative yesterday. Market cap 1.7 trillion naira. Can we have the fixed income market? Uh, that's a reigning market now where a lot of action is taking place. Unfortunately, I don't think we can accommodate now, but we we'll do have it. We'll have it uh, in the afternoon. Uh, I think the edit will be here to give you numbers of intraday in the afternoon during Business Incorporated. So do join us then. So let's head back to the Sunrise Daily Studios. <laughs> 